I have a shadow. Look, there's a deer running in the back. That's right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the MagnaWave Wellness uh, broadcast for today, MagnaWave Wellness TV. I'm glad you're with us. We have some folks joining us in the, uh, in the room, and we're very happy that you're here, and we hope that you enjoy the presentation that we're going to provide for you today. The reason for today's broadcast is to make you aware and bring you up to, uh, with an overview, and bring you up to speed on the new machines that we're introducing uh, into the marketplace over the next few weeks. Uh, they are available for order at this point, but the shipping will begin on some of these devices in uh, mid to late June is the uh, situation at this point. So, But we want to show them to you, discuss them with you, uh, answer any questions that you may have about the devices, and uh, that way you'll understand exactly where, where we're going and what we're uh, wanting to do. I also want to tell you that if you have a question, simply put it in the chat box. And Elaine is with us today. Hello, Elaine. Thank you for joining Hi. us. 
and uh, she'll be going over your questions. Some of them she'll answer during the broadcast uh, in the chat role. Others uh, she will be announcing and will be answering uh, ourselves. So if you have any questions, just put them in the uh, chat role in the chat box and we'll take care of them and answer them as we go. So we might as well get right on with it. And uh, what's happening with the machine situation is we're introducing new digital machines uh, that will not have the actual spark chamber on the devices. So, but they will be totally digitally operated. Uh, will actually make them much more maintenance free. It'll be conceivable that you could have a machine and virtually, as far as the machine is concerned, never require any maintenance to the device. So dust is not an issue. Uh, spark chamber wearing out is not an issue. Uh, there are some elements to the machine that are different, which I'll get to as we discuss each one of the machines as we go along. So again, if you have a question as we go, just put it into the uh, chat box and we'll get right to it. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to discuss what's staying the same. We certainly will continue to manufacture the, mag the MagnaWave Max as you know it. It is an actual analog device with an actual spark chamber. And for those of you who are not totally aware of it, is the signal is generated on this device. It's kind of like it would be if we had um, two to, uh, let me bring the picture over, I'm sorry, it's taking me just a second to get used to my switcher. We got a new switcher we're using. But basically the spark chamber is like two nails that a spark takes place between. When the nails are very close together, the spark gap is close and the signal is very low. When the, when the parts are farther apart and the spark is longer, then the generation of the signal is more intense or stronger is the way we discuss it as uh, we do this. So we will continue to manufacture the MagnaWave Max device in an all-terrain configuration and in an office configuration. We will have the office unit certainly available in the current configuration. We understand that some people want that type of device. They want the strength that it provides. And so we're going to keep those two devices available to uh, to the public. So we are going to continue to manufacture the MagnaWave Max and the MagnaWave Max office unit. So none of that will change, but we are going to introduce the new digital units. And so what I'd like to do now is kind of start discussing the units. We have the MAX units and then we're going to have what we call the MIA units. M-A-I-A. -A. MIA is a Greek god for family and health. And we're kind of looking at the new units to help provide health to you, your family, the pets that you're taking care of, the equine athletes that you're taking care of. Now the primary difference, the picture that you're looking at here on the screen is actually one of our older units, but it, the, the MIA all-terrain will come in that case. It's a smaller case than the MAX case that we have today. This particular configuration will fit in most airline overhead container, overhead uh, storage units. So the, the MIA all-terrain unit will be in a smaller case. It'll only weigh about 25 to 30 pounds with coils and all. So it's, it'll be much lighter. The MAX machine currently weighs about 47 pounds. So it's going to be a lighter unit. Now here's the primary difference between the MAX unit and the MIA unit, the all-terrain vehicle. So let me come back over here to, uh, to me and we'll talk about this for a second. The primary difference between the two units is that the digital units are about 20% weaker than the spark chamber units or the max units. So there will be a change in power between the max unit and the MIA unit, which is digital. Now what that'll mean, if you took a coil and put it on your shoulder and treated yourself, you would not be able to tell the difference because you rarely take the machine and turn it as high as it can go when you're treating soft tissue issues. So you'll, it'll be as much power as you will need to treat any type of soft tissue type of, of indication or pain or anything like that. The difference will come in if you're treating a, uh, or you'll notice the difference potentially if you're treating an elbow or you're treating someone's wrist, you, when you turn the machine all the way up, you're gonna be a little less strength than you would be on a max machine. 
<clears throat> what that'll mean to you as the provider or someone using the machine. So if you're going to treat a wrist for four minutes with the Max machine, you might treat it for six minutes or seven minutes with the uh, Mia machine. And so that really that's negligible. It really doesn't make any difference. You would not be able, I've had people with these demonstration machines and I don't tell them which machine it is and they cannot tell the difference when I'm treating their shoulder or their back or a knee or something like that. The only difference in, and primarily the only place that you would see a difference would be if you're treating the hoof of a horse and you want to turn the device as high as it'll go. Again, instead of a six minute treatment, you might turn that into an eight to 10 minute treatment to get the energy that you want from the Mia in those types of instances. Now, the reason that all of this is happening is as you know, we've been working with the FDA to gain FDA approval as a wellness device and inflammation reduction. The FDA felt that the strength of the machine as we've had it for years was more than necessary for people. So we re-engineered the device, have patents on the device, and have it so it's very comfortable to be used for humans or animals, but it is a little weaker in its signal from the, uh, from the MIA device that we're going to have. And just to kind of cover that for a second, if you remember Bob Dennis's, Dr. Bob Dennis's webinar a few weeks ago when he talked about the, the importance of the drop on the signal that's generated with the machine. You want it to go up and then drop very straight, a very straight line drop. This unit, the new MIA digital units, actually has a, the most, as I'll, I'll call it, severe or the most sharp drop that, that's available. So it's really meeting exactly the, the, uh, the design of the wave that he discussed as the most effective wave for pain relief and, and wellness and help with the PEMF devices. So that's where the device came from. We did it to so we could fit the FDA uh, guidelines and then therefore go back and uh, secure the FDA approval that we've been working on for a long time, several years as a matter of fact. So again, the MAX units will stay the same and the MIA units will be the digital units. They'll be a little weaker than that unit, but they will be available in an all-terrain unit. Let me go show those uh, once again. They'll be available in the, um, in the all-terrain unit, which you see here, and it'll be that size case, which will fit in an air airplane carry-on. It'll be in what we call the traveler. We'll have a traveler unit that is the same thing. It's a briefcase size unit. Uh, and the coils, you could put maybe one coil in the case and have the other coils in a bag or something like that that you'll be carrying. And it'll also be in a desktop office unit that'll be available in the uh, MIA configuration. This particular picture you're seeing there is actually a different unit that we'll talk in a minute, but they're the same size. The office unit will be about three inches by 10 inches by nine inches. So it'll be about the size of a piece of paper or let's say a textbook that you would have in college, a good size, thick textbook that might be a couple inches thick, eight by 10 in size. That's all the bigger the office unit will be. And uh, it'll only weigh maybe 15 pounds uh, in the office unit. Now all the coils will be interchangeable on these particular units that we'll have. So if you've got a current machine and you wanna add a machine to your practice and do something different, you'll be able to do that. You just interchange the coils from device to device and everything will work just fine for you in that type of situation. So if you have any questions, just kind of put them in the chat roll here. Let me see if we've got any questions going on um, to, to ask us at this point. So I'm kind of moving along quickly. I don't mean to, I get excited and things happen and I'm not paying attention and I might be talking uh, too fast as I go, but we want to certainly make sure you're comfortable with what we're describing as far as the machines that are available for you and to you. So we have the Max and we have the MIA units. The MIA unit will be an all-terrain unit that'll fit in, in uh, overheads. And we'll have the Traveler unit in the MIA configuration. And we will also have the Office unit 
in the MIA configuration. These devices are all the same price as the Macs because they're really the same type of power that you're familiar with on the current Macs that we've been using and the current pricing on the devices is available on, on the website but the prices will remain the same between those high powered units that are available. So now what I'd like to do is kind of tell you what's happening next that we're really very excited about. Uh, we got a question. Oh, we have a question. Elaine, sure. What is the uh, question, please? Uh, Barry would like to know, is FDA approval being sought out for all of these devices? Uh, very good question. Uh, thank you. But what the way it's going to work is the FDA approval will be on, let me get it up here so you can, so you can have it and see it. Uh, the FDA approval will be on the office unit. Now we may then apply for FDA approval on the traveler unit. Maya office unit. On the, excuse me, on the Maya office unit. But initially the FDA approval will be on the office unit. Now the way that works uh, in, uh, in most situations, uh, the way that comes into play is devices are approved by the FDA by design, color, and use. And so you have to go and get a specific device approved. We will be able then to achieve what they call predicate approval on similar devices in our line that meet the FDA requirements. For example, one of the issues that we've had in the past is that the equine unit being in a plastic case for protection and, and durability is actually, I wouldn't say flammable, but it will melt in a flame or in a fire. And so that precludes that particular case from being FDA approved. However, those regulations are changing all the time. But we, we are working to approve things all the way across the line. But primarily, as far as FDA approval is concerned, it will be the office unit in the uh, MIA configuration. <clears throat> now, but that doesn't mean that you can't, I mean, you're going to be able to say that the device that we're using meets FDA regulations. We have FDA approved devices. And what people want to know is that the device is safe and that the FDA feels that it is a device that can be used freely in healthcare and that type of thing. The only thing the FDA uh, ruling really gives a, a practitioner or a person in the end is billing of insurance. A doctor can bill insurance with an FDA approved device. In the veterinary world, there's very little insurance, so most things are, are paid in cash. Many veterinary things are the same way. But if it's an FDA approved device, then that's good. The doctors have modalities that are FDA approved. I hope that answers your question. If you have additional questions, uh, please uh, bring them up and I'll answer them. Elaine, you have another question? Yes. Um, do the devices come with coils included? And if so, what coils? All the devices, uh, excellent question, the devices will remain the same. They will come with a butterfly coil and a large loop. Now, uh, is how they will come. And then there will be, the paddles are available for the, and the, and the boxes certainly, the, the Zoom box, the Zoom paddles will be available and uh, the, the, uh, um, the pad, the mag energy pad will be available as an additional uh, purchase. But it will come with the large loop and a, uh, butterfly. However, if someone has a machine already and they're going to add a second machine to their practice, they could then take the second machine and maybe get the mat with the second machine and a, and a paddle and then have all of them interchangeable between the units. The coils will work interchangeably between the various units uh, that we're going to have available. If I can, Elaine, I know we have some other questions coming in. Yeah. Let me just quickly kind of go over the, the other machines that are available, are going to be available so people will understand the whole range and that may also bring some more questions to the front. The What's going to happen is we're also going to have a unit called the SEMI. And SEMI means half. And the units will be half power. So there'll be 50% of the power of the max units. And in, again, in most cases, if you were using this unit on your back pain or on a shoulder issue, you would not really be able to tell the difference. You're gonna use it for about the same amount of time and you might turn it higher to use. It'll have a five minute and a 15 minute and a 15 minute setting. 
So you can use it on five minutes for high, 15 minutes for high, or you can put it on 30 minutes and it's a little lower setting and someone could lay on a mat or you could treat an elbow or something like that for that length of time. That unit will sell for $6,500. What we think is, a, is neat about that particular unit is someone could use it, treat their horses basically, not really going after to reverse an injury, but keep something from happening. And it can be very healthy and help heal situations most certainly, but it'll be a $6,500 unit. That'll be probably stronger than most of the other PEMF products on the market, but it will be half of the power of the max unit. That unit will also be available in a, what we call a traveler, traver con configuration. And it'll be these, the device in the lower right-hand corner of your screen now, or lower right-hand corner of your screen is the size of the Mia Traveler. The one in the back left-hand corner is the size of the Semi Traveler. So it'll be, mu again, much smaller, uh, will weigh only about 15 pounds at most. <clears throat> and it, it's very convenient and it'll be available for uh, where we see these working is if a doctor has units in their clinic and they want to send a unit home with someone to use for a couple of weeks, this is a perfect unit to use. The power is not too much, but yet they can get significant enough power to do the inflammation reduction and the healing process of the everything we're trying to achieve. <clears throat> and so that's where that particular unit will fit. It'll work in a veterinary clinic if they want to send a machine home and they want the person to use it every day on a particular indication, they can, they'll be able to do that with, um, with that type of machine and work out very well. So that's basically as we describe it, we do, and I'll go over it again if I may, we're going to have the max machines that are as powerful as they are today as they've ever been. And for those who want that, that is certainly available. We will have the uh, MIA machines, which will be, uh, they're digital, they'll be a little bit less in power, but they'll be very effective. You will not normally be able to tell the difference in the strength of the power of the devices. And then the SEMI, which is going to be 50% less, very good for a take-home type of thing or a take-home rental type of situation with a device, yet very portable and very easy to move around. So those are the configurations of the devices that we have certainly available at this point in the pure PEMF area. And then, as I will say, we also will have, uh, as we've discussed in the past, we have the multi-wave 7S, which is basically seven types of therapy in one application. You have light therapy, heat therapy, massage therapy, magnetic therapy, and microcurrent or e-stem in one application at one time. Very effective for particular types of indications. We have a couple of them in the field now and the results that we're getting back are very good. The magnetic field is a weaker field but it's very good for, for healing and some basic pain relief. So that unit is certainly available. It's on the website. You can get more information on that. Or if you have questions, I'm certainly uh, willing and happy to answer any questions that you may have about that particular unit. So I'll come back now and I'll say, Elaine, are there any other questions that you want to bring to us at this point? Oh, she's, uh, she's got her, she's muted. She has her microphone muted. Oh, she needs to sorry. unmute. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Are the loops interchangeable between the Maya and the SIMI devices? Yes, the loops will be interchangeable between the Maya, the SIMI, and the MAX. So they'll work perfectly across the board wherever you want them. People that are buying for the first time who don't have any loops and they, and they don't want the second device or whatever the situation may be, the semi devices and actually the Maya office units if someone does not have other things will come with a single plug one plug to put into the device not two like we're very familiar with but we're going to make it in both configurations so if someone has coils already they can get any of these devices with the double plug and their coils will work perfectly be perfectly interchangeable However, once again, if someone's new, if a doc office comes in or someone wants to use one of these units in their, on their farm or with their pets or on themselves, they can get it. It is available with a single plug, same coils, 
same large loop, same butterfly, but just a single plug going into the unit. And that's one of those things that the FDA kind of wants. They want a single plug type of device. So they look more friendly on that type of configuration. Hope uh, that answers your question. Yes, ma'am. I have two more. And this is kind of a two uh, pronged question. Okay. So is the semi unit half of the power of the Maya unit or the max unit? Great question. Basically, it's half of the power of the max unit. Okay. And uh, then. What Go is ahead. the power in terms of Gauss for the Maya unit and the semi-semi unit? Okay, and that's that's very good questions, and I and I'll answer the Gauss thing for you. We've just developed a meter. It's been very difficult. The wave signals, as Dr. Dennis was pointing out when he was talking last week, the wave signals want to go like this, up and down, and what we want is a signal that goes up and comes straight down. So all of these units do that, but it's been, and they're start and stop signals. In other words, it's a burst of power and it stops, it shuts off. Most magnetometers cannot measure a, a burst that starts and stops with, and so we've developed one and had it specially made uh, by a company that will measure the gauss of a burst, nanosecond burst of injury, of, of energy, not in, injury, but energy. So. Uh, we have this device and what we found is when we put it on the max unit today, we're receiving anywhere from 1400 to 1750 gauss uh, on a burst. When I put that on the paddle, that gauss range goes up to 24 to 2600 gauss, which is why we're having such good luck with the paddle on, on hand situations, on feet with horses, slide it in the box, and they're getting a tremendous amount of gauss and energy. And what that, what that equates to is a massive amount of energy into the area of indication and to, pro to provide the inflammation reduction and the pain relief that we're looking for. The smaller units are going to be, certainly the gauss will be a little bit reduced, but we're going to be looking in the range, in the, in the units, in the, in the range of 1,200 or 1,000 gauss when we look at the, at the MIA, and we'll probably be looking in the, on the smaller unit, 700 to 1,000 gauss on the semi units. Now we'll be able to measure that exactly, but that's a range of where we're going to go. And it's just the intensity of the signal. The spark chamber on the units is not as far apart, whether it's electrically or digitally controlled or controlled automatically or controlled with the spark chamber on the max units. So the gauss ranges will still be many units on the market. There are some units on the market today that measure gauss in, in uh, 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 thousands of gauss. They don't even, they don't even get to one or two or three or 10 uh, gauss. Uh, many units are on the market. Most units are on the market in the, in the small home type of units are getting in the neighborhood of 200 to 300 gauss. Uh, some are in micro gauss, which is less than one gauss. So that's the difference. There's a huge amount of gauss difference between our high voltage type of devices and the other low voltage, low frequency type of devices. Now we need to, I need to finalize and get down to you with those gauss figures, but that's the range. You're probably going to see a range between, uh, between the three devices of a low of six to 700 gauss with a high on the max unit up to uh, 1700 gauss or with a paddle up to 2400 gauss. Anything else, Elaine? You're muted. Barry? Yeah, I'm sorry. Barry, what kind of product liability does MagnaWave provide on these products? And how many coils will come with the machine? The machines come with uh, two coils. Uh, that standard is that the machines do come with two coils. Uh, product liabil liability uh, coverage is available for individual folks. It is difficult to uh, to have the factory carries a multi-million dollar, two million dollar type of policy on um, on the product itself. One of the things with product liability is the fact that when devices are FDA approved and UL approved and made in FDA approved conditions, that makes product liability attainable. 
The reality of it is it's very difficult today in some instances for an individual to have product liability coverage and um, with this type of device. Uh, that is just, that's just across the board how difficult it is in many cases to have that type of coverage. That's why people have releases. Once it's FDA approved, and our devices are, just so people understand, manufactured in an FDA approved manufacturing facility. It's, uh, it's uh, audited several times a year. They can walk in whenever they want to and examine the manufacturing procedures. They can examine the parts. All the parts have to be listed with the FDA that we're using. So that, that doesn't mean that it's FDA approved. It just means that we're manufacturing in an FDA approved facility. We meet all ISO 9000 standards, which means that every part in the device is stored in a particular fashion. So we can tell at any one time what part was used in what device and where that device is at any time. Everything is traced by serial numbers all the way along the line. And our units are also safety approved in a United Laboratories type of lab uh, for fire safety, electrical safety, and all of that. Many devices on the market today are not safety approved, do not go through any safety testing. We are safety tested, we are built an FDA approved facility, and we are in fact applying for FDA approval at this point with the new devices uh, as they come. And when that happens again, product liability will be more easily attainable. I hope that answers your question. If not, ask it and maybe I can clarify um, whatever part you want. Does that include UL approval? The, you, you, the approval is from a safety laboratory on par with United Laboratories. Uh, United Laboratories has specific guidelines that they, uh, that they adhere to with regard to flammability, case control, and that type of stuff. Our new office unit will be in a case that is not flammable, is a metal enclosure that will meet those type of standards, but it is safety uh, approved. Okay. Okay. Any other Thanks. questions that may have? Yeah, Barry wants to know why none of the machines have a UL, UL mark on them. The machines do not have a UL mark because they're not United Laboratories tested. We are testing in a different independent safety lab. I don't have the name of that lab uh, on me at this point. <clears throat> but to, to the end that quick to not end the question, but to that end, Barry, the situation, as, as I pointed out, in order to meet UL specifics, you do certain things. That doesn't mean that other safety laboratories don't meet very similar standards or have similar standards, but we do manufacture to a safety procedure. They are all safety tested, heat tested for electrical safety and flame safety. And uh, that's why you don't see a UL sticker on the particular device. I can tell you that many manufacturers are, do not have their devices safety checked at all. And I'm not saying that about anybody in particular, I'm just saying we go to extreme lengths to make sure that we meet these standards. Many of our devices, and we're going to reclassify because we're changing the devices to digital, are approved for human use with all these same type of specifications in Europe. And so certainly we're looking for the US FDA approval right behind that. In order to have FDA approval, we will have to have, and there are, the FDA does not require a device to be UL certified. They device that require that it be safety certified or past safety testing. There are several labs that do that. Any other questions? Um, Patricia would like to know, could you review the application for the different coils, please? Review the application for the different coils. You mean how the coils are used? Is that what she's asking? Um, yeah, the different, like how the coils are used, what, what coils will go with this machine, I think, as well, and how they're used. The basic the machines machine. will come with the large loop. And let me bring a picture up here that will show the configuration of the devices, if I, if I may do that. The, let me bring this over. The machines come with the large loop, which is suitable to treat uh, uh, low back situations, mid back, shoulder, 
uh, any type of situation like that. You can sit on it if you want to treat prostate or that type of thing. If you're using it on a horse, it covers a much larger area of tissue. So the machines will come with a large loop and a butterfly loop, which is on the left-hand side of your picture there. The butterfly is designed to go over a knee or around a horse's knee or over a hoof or over your wrist or that type of thing. It can be opened up or closed up. So the devices come with the large loop and the butterfly loop. The other attachments that are available is the paddle, certainly, the zoom paddle and the zoom box if you're using it for horses. And uh, we have the mag energy pad that can one can lay on and be treated that way. We can also have custom loops made available or if someone has a specific size they want, we can build a loop to your specifications. Loops are very expensive because they're one of the hardest things to make. If you can imagine having several 50 to 60 feet of coil spun around inside of those uh, uh, latex tubes that are uh, health approved uh, tubes, it's very difficult to construct and make the loops, but that's what comes with the devices. Okay. Yeah, Patricia wanted basically wanted to know why you would pick one coil over another. Oh, okay. Great question, Patricia. Um, Really, it comes down to when, when treating some people, and I'm going to talk horses here for a second, but it applies the same thing to a human. Uh, when someone is treating a horse, they may like the large coil. They just are accustomed to it. They like it, it because it covers a larger, as I pointed out, a larger area of tissue. Now, the, the uh, smaller coil does a smaller area of tissue. So if you wanted to work, let's say you wanted to work on a, on a horse's sacrum and you move the coil up and you put it on the upper back of the horse right over the area of the sacrum. If you use a smaller coil, you're not stimulating as much tissue so you can turn it a little higher so you actually go deeper you know, on your penetration. If you have that large coil up there and you try to turn it up to get a little deeper, you actually may make it a little uncomfortable because you're covering a larger area uh, of, the, of the horse. Same thing, if you want to treat someone's shoulder, if you use the small coil, you can turn it a little higher simply by laying it on the shoulder and turn it higher to get a better amount of energy into the area to help the inflammation reduction and the pain relief. Whereas if you put the large coil on there, the whole shoulder may be jumping and it may be just a tad uncomfortable. So you select the coil, the energy is the same, but you select the coil that is most comfortable to use, most comfortable and fits the indication as you're, as you're treating it. For example, if you want to treat a foot, if you wanted to treat the ball of your foot or the heel of your foot, you'd feel more and have more direct energy if you rested your heel in the center of the small coil, the butterfly coil. Whereas if you put your foot in the middle of the large coil, you could turn the machine all the way up and you'd feel nothing. That doesn't mean it's not working and the, the result can actually be the same. But people are funny. They like to feel something going on. So if you put your foot in the middle of the large coil and turn the machine all the way up, you will feel nothing. You're getting energy and it's doing its job, but you won't feel it. So people become accustomed to, I like to use this coil or I like to use that coil. Me personally, I've always enjoyed and, and liked using the smaller configuration of, of the coil as I work a person or an animal that I might be, be dealing with. <clears throat> and, and that makes no difference if you're treating a horse or a, or a small animal, a dog or a cat, or a person. The coil size doesn't make any difference. It's just how you're applying it. My little seven pound dog lays in the center of our coil and we treat her and it works very well. She doesn't feel anything, but she'll go right to it and lay down when that thing's clicking. She loves the way it makes her feel. Any additional questions? Uh, yes, and I'm gonna address one. Rick asked if there will be a matrix on our website comparing the different models. And yes, we are currently in the process of building a new website. It will launch within the next week. And um, it will have everything on there, all the information that our same website has, just better functionality. Um, also, Rick wanted to know, what is the warranty on the new units and where are they manufactured? The, man the units are manufactured in the United States, uh, in California. The end assembly is, is made in California. 
the new digit, the, the MAX units, as we are familiar with them, are totally assembled in our California factory. The other units, the boards are made here, and this part's made over there, and then they're put, they come in and they're put together in the, in the factory. But everything, including all the boards on the new machines, are manufactured in the United States. The current warranty on the devices is three years. Now, that's a very good question. Uh, the factory may in fact extend that warranty on the digital devices because they really are going to be maintenance free. The only thing not covered in the warranty is the coils. Uh, the coils can be damaged by a horse standing on it or someone laying it outside or it gets con bent or something or whatever. So the, ho the coils are not warrantied under the program unless it's defect from manufacturing and that can happen you can have a coil that where the joints are glued together just doesn't work and the, and the wire breaks in, in two months they're certainly going to replace that but if it's if it's from if the coils fine everything's good the coils basically are not are not covered under the warranty I will tell you that in the 10 years that we've been doing this probably have only had at best maybe 10 coil failures whether they were stepped on dropped run over, whatever. Very few uh, uh, wires pulled out of the machine. That can happen, and that does happen a lot. People are doing something and somebody moves and a wire comes out of the machine, very easily repaired, put the, put the uh, end right at, right on, screw it in place, and bingo, away you go. So that's the uh, warranty on the devices as it stands today and the coils. Okay, um, will there be certification marks on the new machines and will there be FDA stickers on the Maya unit if it gets FDA approval, when it gets FDA approval? The units, when the FDA approval comes, there will be a change because as I said, FDA approval is name, design, color specific. So the factory will, will work closely with the factory, but the factory will arrive at a description of the device at that point and the color of the device, and it will be available to everyone, but the, the label will be on that device. If, if the devices that are in the field, if someone is having their device a little different in the field, then it will not necessarily have that. But as we understand today, all the devices in that configuration, there may be some name variances as far as the FDA, FDA is concerned, how it's described in order to have that sticker on the machine may vary a little bit. But the, when, once they're FDA approved, they will have FDA stickers in the design and name and configuration that the FDA approves. Great. Anything else? I think we're caught up. <laughs> we're caught up. Well, that's a pretty good, pretty good thing. And we're what? We're about uh, um, 40 minutes into the, into the broadcast. And I can answer additional questions if folks have them. I hope these answers were uh, significant enough. It's a very broad area. When you start talking FDA, I mean, it's a different ball game altogether and you have to move around to configure uh, to the FDA types of standards and, and what they want. <clears throat> and so, but our, our desire is to manufacture a unit that when the FDA approval is made available, the units will fit that umbrella and everything will be fine at that point. Uh, so uh, that's how that will go. Okay. Uh, will, will devices purchased prior to FDA approval will or will not be retroactively applied? That's a very good question. Uh, and I really don't have an answer for that question at this point. That is the goal, is the devices are all FDA approved in whichever model will be FDA approved and apply. To, I don't know if the person is talking, if they're an equine person, a small animal person, or if they're, talk, if they're a human doctor talking about FDA approval in an office environment. Uh, perhaps they could clarify that for me and that will help me with, with the answer. But what happens, for example, there are devices in the veterinary world today that people that when they're talked about, they say, well, this device is FDA approved. And that's correct. A particular device was FDA approved for dental use in humans. It's an FDA approved device, but it was approved for dental use in humans. But when they're using it in, an, in another field, off-label, if you will, it's still an FDA-approved device, but it's not necessarily FDA-approved for how they're using it. That's called using something off-label. 
again, it gets really um, convoluted or interesting when you get into he says, the he does. He's area. using it. He would be using it on humans. On humans. And in, in a, if that's the case, I, I would pr the, we probably should visit uh, uh, offline at some point in time and get exactly what they're talking about and give them the best ad advice on to how to pursue uh, this type of device uh, moving forward. Uh, for humans in their type of practice, so how they're going to how they're going to use it. Uh, there are modalities approved by the FDA today for non-union fractures, uh, for bone healing, for incontinence in women, for um, uh, migraine headaches. Uh, they, they're doing testing now and working on for autism, and and many different ways of using these devices. So the modality is is FDA approved today, but the specific use for how a device is designed or approved is a broad swipe of the of the brush. And so that's where it gets very interesting in in the situation. Uh, I hope that answers the question. But we're not yet FDA approved. We have to have the device. Uh, what we wanted to do, just to give the full story, a few years ago, we had we were in the FDA approval mode. We were looking for a predicate approval because based on the other devices that are in the marketplace for FDA approval, but we realized that nothing was patented. And if we gained FDA approval, then our competitors could come in and, and claim FDA approval based on the, our, predicate, our predicate type of device. So we withdrew all of our applications, went to the drawing board, re-engineered the machine, patented several processes in the machine that are applied for at, at this point, and then take that device and go back for FDA approval. And that's what we're going to do. And so that device, that, that is the end result of that particular device. Like I said, if it's in the metal case that, that we're manufacturing for the office desktop model, that can be FDA approved. The same guts will be in the traveler, will be in the in the MIA unit uh, that, that are used for other reasons, but the device itself for surgery or for inflammation redu reduction in humans may be the metal case. Yeah, I hope that people understand that, but that's how the FDA works when it comes down to those types of things. So if someone wanted a device for human use and they wanted to be able to have insurance pretty much guaranteed they'd want to buy the office unit that we're going to have because that's the unit that goes to the trials at the University of Miami that's totally funded that we're going to begin really almost immediately because we wanted to have the devices ready and on the marketplace to gain approval for those devices. You see if we'd have gone and I know this very well because I have a company friend or a, that, that got caught in this if you get that device approved for with the FDA then you can't change it without FDA approval. So you want to make sure that all the components, all the boards, all the aspects of that machine are the way you're going to manufacture it when it's FDA approved. If we come back and change a knob and change the controller of that knob, that has to be approved by the FDA before we can change it on the device. That's how they do it. If they walked in your factory and you're making the device, and they say, well, that's a different knob than you had on this machine. Is the controller different for that knob inside the machine? Well, yes, it is. Well, do you have the certification from the FDA that you can change that knob? Well, no, we don't. They can make you stop working. They can make you stop manufacturing that machine and take you back to the beginning if you've changed something in that device without it, having, without it being FDA approved. So I can't say a broad stake, broad swipe, that all the devices are going to be FDA approved. We are going to be, we hope to achieve, and we feel very comfortable that we will, FDA approved status for our device specific application. And then the other devices will be manufactured in a very similar manner and used in their various areas. Um, I, know, I know it gets convoluted, but I hope I'm answering your questions all right. Um, will the semi unit be uh, the semi unit be available for rent? I think that is part of the goal is to have it available for rent to where people could use it, where docs could have it in their office and rent it to to patients to take home and use uh, for a period of time and then return it. Uh, will it be in our rental program? I'm going to say probably. Uh, we are in the final stages of, of working that out. There's no reason that it wouldn't be and couldn't be. Uh, and so that those are the areas that we're finalizing at this point. Uh, what practitioner certification will be offered for buyers of the new devices? 
We will have certification available even though the devices are changing and we will have to make some updates to the certification uh, program. The actual application of either device, the Max, the uh, Mia, or the Semi will be the same. So they would follow the same protocols. The time of application may be a bit different, but they follow the same protocol. So the application of the certification process for uh, horses or for equine animals and, and humans as is available today and small animals very soon uh, will all be available and all be the same. Okay. Any other so that's for human and equine and then small, small animal to come. Small animal is to come. Yeah. Actually the small animal and the equine are almost hand in hand the same. It's just different pictures of what you're doing. I mean you're going to treat a hip on a, on a dog very similar to the way you're going to treat a hip on a horse except that the area is smaller the and that's a good question that comes up and if i may a lot of times someone says well i got a 20 pound dog and a thousand pound horse do i turn it as high makes no difference if you're treating your shoulder you may turn the machine to the same setting that you would turn it to treat a hip of a horse you you want it to be comfortable if it's uncomfortable on your shoulder then you turn it down a little bit so it's not uncomfortable same thing on a dog if you're treating its hip. You, you turn it up to where you're getting the movement that you want, that you're getting the energy that you want, and that the dog is comfortable. If the dog becomes uncomfortable, you just adjust the coil and change the intensity so, every, so the, the animal or the patient does remain comfortable. That's the key. Okay. Any other questions? Great. I'm enjoying the questions. I hope uh, if, we, if we have more, that's, that's great. Any more, Elaine? Rick asked, will the cost of the new units include certification training? At this point, the cost of the unit does include certification training. We're in a, our goal with certification is to get it to a state approval in various states or across all states to where we can actually have a state licensure. And that's a very arduous progress process because you have to become accredited, you have to meet certain hour requirements and, and all of this. We're going to add, for example, a more intense mammalian anatomy to the certification process. And, and that's a professionally engineered class. It's a professionally taught type of class uh, online as everything else is, but we're going to add that. Well, there are costs involved with that. So there will be a point to where if someone is, wants to acquire certification, there will be a cost for certification. Uh, but right now, I can't say that it will continue for long term at all, but certification is included with the purchase of a machine. Uh, but that could change actually it is going to change at some point what the tact will be because we're going to make the certification more in depth and and uh, uh, just more difficult if you will and that's going to that's going to require much different testing much different teaching and it's going to have come with a cost um Barry would like to know do state vet boards officially recognize magnawave certification various boards i can't say that's that there are state vet boards that recognize uh, MagnaWave, that's where we want to go. That's our goal is to get to that point that a particular state medical association can say, yes, we recognize this form of therapy to be used. Same thing, there are a lot of boards that don't recognize a massage person uh, under their board. They have, say it has to be under this type of classification. So yes, we would like to get to that point. Are we there at this point? No. We are at a point to where many different training or, or competition areas, for example, they'll require, are you certified? Have you had a class or training to use this device? And they're requiring that before people can go on their racetrack or go to their facility and provide training. All of that comes with time. You notice we're schools. Schools go through an accreditation process and they become accredited. Uh, we're doing the same thing. We're improving and increasing. When I went to accreditation boards, I said, okay, this is our goal. How do we start? They say, well, you start. You start a program, you put things together, you begin your education process, you submit it to us and we'll tell you, add this, change this, go over here and do it this way, change the requirement over here. You have to have a practicum, which we are going to implement into the program, a practicum of 50 clients. So that can be if you're doing a cross practice of, of small animals and horses and people, 50 different applications that you record what you're doing, why you're doing, what the result was in order to become certified. And, and that's being added next to our whole procedure. So I hope that answers the question. 
Anything else, Elaine? No. No. Well, one more chance, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, we'd certainly uh, be happy to answer them. Uh, if you have questions that you didn't get answered to your satisfaction because you just want to talk about a little more, please feel free to uh, send me an email at patzemer at magnawavepemf.com and I'd be happy to answer it. Uh, phone numbers are on the website if you'd like to talk to me. Uh, give us a call and uh, we'll get together and we can visit about a particular question that you have or how you might want to use uh, one of the devices in your, for your personal use, your personal animals, or for an implement into your practice. Uh, devices are currently widely used in various med medical practices around the country, everywhere from uh, massage therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists, many MDs use them in their practices off-label. If they're not going to charge insurance, they are perfectly allowed and legal to use in any environment uh, uh, that someone has. We are very careful. We do not diagnose. We don't talk about what they can heal and what they can't heal. They're said to help people, and we know that, it, that they're very good energy producers. The body likes energy. It helps the blood oxygenation. The body likes oxygen. Good oxygenated blood can do a lot of good things in the body. And uh, so we want to be, we, we it, it, and it, this is a good question that just came to me. Uh, as far as regulation is concerned, as a veterinary device, which is where we land in many cases, and in the area of what you would call natural supplementation, natural energy supplementation, we uh, aspire, we are part of the FDA complaint-based regulation. What that means is the FDA, we're registered with the FDA, they know that we're manufacturing the device, they've approved our facility for the device, and they have the right to come into our device and stop us from doing something. They have the right to tell us to do something different. It's called FDA complaint-based regulation. So we are, we're right there working, doing everything we wanna do, or everything that, that people are asking us to do, but to meet the FDA uh, clearance, is, as they call it, a device is FDA cleared or FDA approved. There are different levels. Some devices are original brand new devices and that's one level of FDA approval. If your device is something that's been manufactured by somebody else and you're just ca kind of duplicating that manufacturing process and using it for something else, then that's a different type of FDA approval. Both of them work for uh, insurance uses and that type of thing, but there are different levels or different terminology for FDA uh, approved or FDA cleared type of products. In our world, in the veterinary world as a basis, we operate under the veterinary complaint based regulation and meet all of their guidelines that we can meet and that they that they ask for. I just wanted right. to throw that out because that's a, that's a pretty good area when it comes to FDA, <clears throat> FDA involvement. Uh, we don't want to do anything to overstep our bounds. Uh, we just we want to be an energy supplementation device and help people have some inflammation reduction and pain relief and uh, using our type of modality and, and go on down the road, if you will. Any other questions? No, nope, we're good. I think we're good. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's been great to have you with us today. I hope we, as I said, I hope we answered your questions. And uh, we certainly look forward to visiting with you again next week. As you know, this program was originally scheduled for our Tuesday broadcast, but we had some technical difficulties. So watch your email or watch our Facebook page and uh, uh, visit us on our next live cast, our next uh, broadcast. These broadcasts will be available on the MagnaWave podcast on iTunes and uh, various places. So uh, check that out if you will. Thank you again for joining us and we look forward to talking to you again later. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.